Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, today we're gonna create two cards for using the Spellbinders Large Tie of the Month Club Kit for November 2020. It's called Mary Stitching. It's a six piece set and it is so neat because you can do stitched details um, if you wanted to. They're so pretty on their own, you don't have to add the stitching, which makes it really nice. You get a snowflake and then you get a Christmas tree and you get a really pretty border die. I wanted to show you real quick what it looks like if you die cut it out on a white panel, at least the snowflake. Um, but the Christmas tree and the border is just as pretty. You'll see a little bit when I cut it out. But I'll tape this down right in the center and when you run it through your die cut machine you have all these little holes that create a beautiful decorative snowflake and they're big enough for an embroidery needle so you could do stitch detail which makes it really nice this is what it looks like it's kind of hard to see let me get some I'm going to bring in some um, some red cardstock to show you what it looks like and punch out all the holes that will help too <laughs> but you see how pretty this is I think that's just gorgeous and that's just cut out in your panel. There is an outline piece that if you use it, it will cut out the shape of a snowflake. Here it is against some red cardstock. You can really see how pretty that is. I mean, that would make a nice gift card set right there. <laughs> that makes it really easy. Now, if you take your outline die, line it up with your snowflake, and then run it through, again, it'll cut out that snowflake shape window in your panel, but it also cuts out your snowflake. So, kind of versatile um, when you think about it. But isn't that so, and if you were to die cut out just with the outline piece, it will create a backing for your snowflake if you wanted to um, pop it up and add a little dimension um, with your stitching. Okay, here's your Christmas tree, and then here is your beautiful decorative border. The border has an outline piece also, and the, the border um, only cuts the bottom. So it'll, you can go as long as, or as short as you want with that open top. Now this here is great because Spellbinders has a stitching sequence guide. Stitching sequence guide. It shows you basically how to embroider with, um, with these dies. It'll tell you your starting point with numbers. So number one will be where you start. And, and the same goes for the Christmas tree. And then also the same goes for your border. The border has um, the end pieces and then it also has um, the scalloped pieces that will be separate. And then it also has the little diamond details too. So um, it gives you step-by-step -step basically a guide on how to stitch with that, which makes it very handy. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna bring in some embroidery fl uh, floss. I have some, some real pretty pink, um, and I have some br um, needles here that I just grabbed from my sewing kit. Um, and guys, the needles <laughs> that I use are kinda like Mac Daddy needles because I can't see nothing. <laughs> so the eye on those are like super huge, and I was worried that it wouldn't, it would kinda break the holes of my snowflake that we die cut out. But um, it goes through beautifully, guys. Now this is what I like to do. I already threaded my needle. Now the embroidery floss usually has six strands to it. This is two strands. So I'm um, I'm sewing my snowflake with just two strands of the um, em embroidery floss. I found um, any, I w originally tried all six, but it was just too thick. You, there's no way you could do all six. So maybe two strands is a good amount. Um, this is my buddy. <laughs> he wants to play with the thread. He's my little cutie pie. His name's Princeton, and he, um, I just love that kitty. He, he thinks he's a doggy. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm doing is I tape down the back. I used some double-sided tape that I had from left over from a card kit, and um, basically you just follow your guide. Your guide, um, you thread up through one, and then go through two, and then from two you're gonna go to three. Actually, two, you're going to go back down to one. Um, one is going to be your, your popular go-to hole because all of your threads are going to end up going back through one. So the stitching is very, very basic. I'm just going to continue on um, uh, my cards today. I wanted an alternative to sewing because I know some of us don't like to sew. Um, and I, I my needle 
left my thread here. I got to re fix that. But um, my cards today, actually, if you've seen the, the close-up pictures, that's not sewing, guys. I wanted to show you a different way that you could use your dies in case you don't like to sew. But this is what the completed sewing project look like. looks like. It's gorgeous. Um, I didn't do the Christmas tree or the border. I just wanted to share with you one of the sewing detail ones, but it is so pretty, guys. Now, my feeling is, is if you're going to sew on a project or on a card, um, give it to somebody who is going to appreciate it and probably keep it because a lot of work goes involved. I actually clocked myself and it took 30 minutes to do that. So um, my cards today are going to be faux stitching. So this is an alternative way. You don't know, always kind of think outside the box. So I want to share with you two cards where it looks like you're, you sewed them, but you didn't. So we are going to create two panels. Um, I'm just trimming them down into squares. These are four and a quarter inch squares. I have the blue is called Denim Days. It's a cardstock from Fun Stamper's Journey. And then I have the Oatmeal Cookie cardstock from Fun Stamper's Journey. Um, the Oatmeal Cookie, we're going to add the Christmas tree. And then the Denim Days, we're going to add the snowflake. Um, I wanted a little decorative edge around them, so I'm going to bring in my essential dies. This is the essential square die. I'm not going to use the the square die itself, I'm going to use the decorative piece, the largest decorative piece in the set. Um, this way it's going to give me dotted detail. It goes perfect with your snowflake, guys. Um, I'm going to add that around my my oatmeal cookie cardstock. Now for my snowflake, we're going to add the uh, essential circles. I'm going to take the largest dotted detail one of there, of that one, and then we're going to add that to our Denim Days cardstock. So we're basically kind of framing our elements. I'm just going to tape them down. You want to make sure they're centered. And then um, I'm going to run these through the die cut machine. And then um, while we're at it too, we're going to do two of the borders. Now I'm not going to use the borders um, with stitch detail. I'm going to use them as a decorative element. Um, there is embossed detail on all of these dies, so you don't ha again don't have to do stitching on them. And it, but it really helps when you're you do the technique that I'm going to do today. But we'll tape these down. We're going to scoot them up and grab some white cardstock. Um, I wanted two of the borders, so we're going to do um, we're going to line it up on the very top of my panel, and then I'm going to die cut out two. We're going to add a little bit of a scallop detail to both of our cards today. I'm going to grab the border. It's going to cut out the nice scalloped edge. We'll tape this down as well, and then I'll run everything through the Platinum 6 all at once here. Okay, everything's die cut. You can see how pretty they look. I'm going to set my scalloped borders aside, and first we're going to work on, we're going to zoom in a bit, okay? And then we're going to work on our snowflake. I'm going to add a piece of cardstock behind it just so it's easier for me to see. And again, there's embossed detail on here and that's going to help out when you, I'm going to use colored pencils, guys. I'm using colored pencils um, instead of stitch detail. Now, the darker the cardstock, the lighter the pencil you want. The lighter the cardstock, the darker the pencil you want to get this effect. I'm using white, so white's going to really show up on this dark blue cardstock. Now basically, I'm going to use my stitch guide as it as or my my stitching sequence guide for placement, um, and I'm going to do the same thing as I would if I had a needle and thread in my hand. So I'm going to go from point one to two, and then just continue on. You you can see the pattern here that it creates. Your, your all of your stitched lines will go back down to the number one hole, number one hole, even with the center of your snowflake, the same exact thing. All your stitch detail will all will all end up in that center hole. So that's what makes faux stitching super easy with these patterns. Now I'm just going to draw lines, and makes it easy peasy, guys. And from a distance, you can't even tell it's not not stitched. We're cheating a bit. <laughs> I'm going to continue all around my snowflake. And also in the center. Um, actually, I don't do the center for, for this card because we're going to put a sentiment in here. But um, yeah, the darker the cardstock, the lighter the pencil. Lighter the cardstock, the darker the pencil. I'm just about wrapping it up. And there is my faux stitch detail. How easy was that? Now, this one took 
30 minutes to create and then with a with a colored pencil I probably took three minutes to do guys so it's very very quick and easy you could use a white gel pen if you wanted to um, on a dark cardstock you could see here you could also use um, some silver or gold metallic pens I think that would be really pretty you just want to test them on the cardstock to see how how visible they would be the silver looked really pretty on this cardstock maybe I was thinking about I should have used silver for the blue and then the gold it's kind of dull down I don't think it shows up as well but just an option um, if you don't like to stitch you could use your colored pencils or your pens to do the same exact thing and you know it's nice too um, for my Christmas tree I'm using a green pencil dark green pencil and um, I had mine really sharp I suggest maybe not having it too sharp because I broke the tip off what you're doing is you're putting um, you're drawing a line from one hole to the next so the holes are going to kind of stop you from overlapping if you know what I mean it so it makes it very very quick and easy because the holes actually stop your coloring <laughs> but there's with green I'm loving this I think it turned out so pretty so now on the bottom of the Christmas tree I'm going to bring in a brown pencil and using my um, uh, stitching sequence guide I'm going to create some X's this one here this shows you how to do it it's but you're basically just creating three X's with your threading so we're just going to draw three X's without threading <laughs> and it looks just as good well nothing's going to look as good as stitching guys but it's an alternative okay so my Christmas tree is done and again if you want to use green thread I think uh, more power to you I think they would look just as gorgeous I'm gonna take both of my um, both of my scallop pieces and I just want a little bit of a scalloped edge underneath each one of these squares um, and I love the way this looked I die cut it out actually with some gold cardstock too and the embossed detail was just gorgeous even without stitching so this is nice to have in your stash but I added the white scallop underneath each one of my images here, just adding tape behind the cardstock and then tacking it down. And then I'm gonna bring in some coordinating ribbon. Um, for my oatmeal cookie cardstock, um, my card base is gonna be created with a cocoa powder, which is the dark brown cardstock. So that's the name of the ribbon here. It's from Fun Stamper's Journey. It's called Cocoa Powder Gingham Ribbon. So I think it coordinates really well with these two colors. Kind of gives it a country kind of a feel and so we'll add a bow to the left for this one. And then um, for my snowflake card, I'm gonna bring in um, some cotton chambray shirt ribbon. Um, I think it goes really well. It kind of looks like denim a little bit. And so I'm gonna tie a bow just over the seam for my snowflake, quick and easy. Bows sometimes just give it a finishing touch. <laughs> We're gonna flip over each one of our panels and then I'm gonna add some foam squares behind here. Careful not to um, hit those dotted details. And then my snowflake I added to a white card base and then for my Christmas tree, we're gonna again bring it to the, the cocoa powder card base, the dark brown. Okay, there is a star on top of my Christmas tree and since to me it kind of looks a little bit country, I'm going to um, Take a wooden star and we're going to just glue this down on top of our tree kind of covering it um, and I think that just gives it the, the perfect amount of of detail now for my sentiment for my snowflake I'm bringing in a smile die we're going to die cut this out twice actually once with um, white cardstock and then another with um, white fun foam I'm actually gonna layer both of these together. This way I have a little bit of dimension with my sentiment here. And then I'm just gonna glue my white cardstock to the fun foam. And then we'll take our smile and add that just in the middle of our snowflake. And I love the way that look. Now, if you didn't pop up your panels, you could really see that white behind um, the snowflake. Um, but I kinda like the dimension, so. I popped it up 
I'm going to dot my eye here. It's stuck in my, in my die. <laughs> we'll add that. I think that looks good. And then for my sentiment for my Christmas card, I'm going to bring in the sent, uh, sentiment stamp set from last month's card kit. Um, there's a sentiment here in here that says, um, what does it say? Make it jolly. There we go. I'm going to use that, stamp that with some Versamark ink on some cocoa powder cardstock, and then we're going to add some white um, embossing powder, and we'll melt that, and then I'll just block it off and trim it down so our sentiment's ready to go. This one we're going to flip over and add foam adhesive behind. I think we just need three of the smaller ones, and then this is going to go in the center of our Christmas tree. Okay, for bells and whistles, I'm going to bring in some um, fashion silver embellishments. I thought they would go really good with the blue for my snowflake card. I'm just going to add some to the center. There's some like uh, details that look like flowers around the snowflake. I'm going to dot those and then add a couple around the edges of the snowflake and then in the center also. I'm going to space these out a little bit more. <laughs> And then I'm going to um, take, let's get this one over as well. For my Christmas tree, we're going to use some fashion gold um, embellishments and basically just dot the center of each one of um, the circles in the Christmas tree. And since there's no stitch detail, there's no, um, they adhere beautifully, which makes it really nice. We'll just add those. Now, if you were to do this with thread, I would suggest maybe using a glue to secure these because they might just pop off. <laughs> we'll add our third one. It kind of slid under there. We gotta fix it. But those are my cards today, guys. I think they turned out really pretty. I just wanted to share with you an alternative way and a real quick way to create with a with the Mary stitching set this month. If you guys are interested in the Large Die of the Month Club Kit, it's great value. It's a subscription that comes to your door every month. And um, again, this is the, the November 20th, uh, November, it's not November 20th, November 2020 Large Die of the Month Club Kit. But um, thank you so much for joining me. I wish you a fabulous day. If you guys want to see still shots, go visit my blog. I have some still shots over there. But um, thanks so much for joining me. I will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.